Mary Bouchevier was selected by Jill Moser, and her paintings, sculptures, and installations draw the line, draw the viewer into an immediacy of the color experience. And for sure, that's true. In developing her own color language, she has explored literary, historical, and theoretical sources as diverse as the Kabbalah and Goethe's color theory. She was born in Washington, D.C. Uh, to a foreign service family, and she studied at the Academy der Blinden Kunst in Munich. Sorry, my German isn't very good. I can do better in French. Uh, she's taught at the School of Visual Arts, Suffolk County Community College in River Riverhead, and Lacoste School of Fine Arts in France. And she's guest lectured at Yale University. She moved to Long Island in 1993, and she currently lives and works in Sac Harbor. Welcome, Mary Bouchevier. Hi, I'm Mary Bouchevier. Thank you, Terry Sultan, Alicia Longwell, Corinne, and the staff of the Parish Art Museum for putting on this show. And thank you to Jill Moser for selecting my work to be exhibited alongside hers and Dan Weldon's. My work uh, is primarily involved in ideas about color. I went to art school in Munich in Germany in the 1970s and moved to New York City in 1979. <laughs> I moved out here in 93. And the work that's exhibit, exhibited here is from 1990, so I wanted to show you some images of work from before then and some of the things I've done subsequently. So this was shortly after I moved to New York City and it's a piece that consists of 12 panels. It was thought of a cycle, as a cycle through the months of the year. This is from an exhibition in France. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a folding yardstick climbing up the wall and also descending from the wall, there's a red satin rope. So I was looking at ideas of ascension and descension and also an idea that's expressed again in the shape of the paintings in this exhibition of the combination of the subconscious and the intelligence or conscious mind. This is a piece from 1987. It's painted on an artist's apron. This piece location is in the shape of Bagua, which is a kind of Taoist cosmological map. This piece is called Dr. Babbitt's Chromalume. It's a reproduction of an instrument that was mass produced at the turn of the century for color healing. And it was meant to be used exactly in the way that I've, it's been photographed there it would be set up in a window with the sun coming through and the different parts of the body would be irradiated by the colors coming through the glass. And this is an installation shot of the exhibition at Daniel Newberg Gallery in 1990 where the works that are here on display were first exhibited. There were seven of them and they were thought of as a cycle the end of the cycle being freedom from the illusion of separateness. So it was thought of as a kind of contemplation on evolving the self. And it begins with red work, which is, refers to the beginning of an alchemical transformation, followed by 4th of July, revolution, high tower, Actually, these are in reversed order. Uh, <laughs> letting go of preconceived notions, sure cure, a moment of respite, phonos, a kind of innocence that ensues, Dio Hercule, a rebirth, and Raphael, as I said before, a freedom from the illusion of separateness. 
1994, I did this installation in New York City. The grass is, represents a field of self-cultivation. The wall has five courses and represents the five senses. The wall is both a barrier and a connection to what is beyond. This was the following year. It's called Vertical Minute. I was told by one of my colleagues that in schools, the time 1111 is referred to as the vertical minute because our wishes go straight to source. And this was conceived of as uh, tools for self, uh, for self cultivation. The shovel like shape is the subconscious, the horns, the will, and the translucent windmill, the intelligence. This is a neon piece. The red is neon and the blue is argon. These are gases that are activated by electricity. So when this isn't turned on, it's actually, there's no color, it's clear. And this has to do with the circulation in the human body. This is called the path of the arrow. And this comes from, the title comes from the mystic Kabbalah and the tree of life. So it's believed that there are spheres of emanation and uh, a progression from one sphere to the other. But the most direct path from below to above is a straight path called the path of the arrow. And these were pieces that were done from actually a window cleaning ladder. <laughs> and the piece on the left is the part that's connected to the ground. The piece in the middle is the center piece and the top and the piece on the right is the ladder that connects to the window. So I, had, I felt it had a good metaphorical sense already built into it, and I was interested in the space between the rungs of the ladder. And this is called Inner Landscape. Its name is derived from a, a Taoist painting that shows an actual landscape with people and plants and is a reflection of what goes on in the human body. And this has to do with the idea that the bodily organs have different colors and the movement in the painting has to do with the energy flowing through the human body but through the organs. Some of you may be familiar with these concepts from acupuncture, either as practitioners or recipients. And the acupuncture points actually have some very poetic names. There's a point at the sole of the foot, K1, kidney one, that's called the bubbling spring. And this is a fairly recent painting from, 19, uh, from 2019. And it's called Orea. It's named after an ancient spring. I was interested in these deep sources of water and also the connection between the land mass and the water and where they connect. So thank you for having me and thank you for being here. <laughs>